Hello everybody, welcome to Bad Big Games, where we talk about all things games, news, reviews, unboxings, and breakdowns. I'm your host, Joseph, and today we are going to break down the Ghost of Tsushima gameplay state of play. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, Future Joe, start the show. So gang, it's been over three years, 2017, since we originally seen Ghost of Tsushima wheeled out in front of us, and the hype for me began right there. This story takes place in feudal Japan during the Mongol invasion, the first Mongol invasion. You're following Jin, a samurai on the path of vengeance, and isn't that really all you need? So just before I get into this breakdown of this 18 minute state of play, I want to give you guys my thoughts walking in, my thoughts walking out, and all that good stuff in between. So expectations, through the roof again i've been on board with this since the first trailer i'm not the big uh, you know into like japanese culture um but i do love a good western i do love a good star wars and they all take from the kurosawa like movie aesthetic those samurai films and this is very much a love letter to those kurosawa films so right off the bat knowing it's sucker punch me being a huge infamous second son fan i am all on board with what they're about to show us in 18 minutes is nothing to scoff at and man did it fly by let's get into this breakdown so first things first you see Jin in his civilian garb you're not seeing him as the ghost or the samurai that is Jin. you are on a path to vengeance but sometimes you kind of got to wear it casual and so you see him on top of a, a hilltop overlooking a beautiful skyline that is war torn and you first and foremost need to find your next objective now there's been rumors and speculation that there's no waypoints whatsoever in this game and you're kind of right and you're kind of wrong what they do instead is they want to minimize hud as much as possible so that you're only seeing what is right in front of you you're seeing Jin in the beautiful landscape you don't want this stupid hud around getting in the way so what they do instead of having a waypoint marker they actually mark it with the wind so the waypoint is actually what direction the wind's blowing so if you want to set it on a town the wind will start blowing in the direction of that town which is really awesome and if you get lost then all you have to do is just ping it on your map and the gust of wind will point you into the right direction so it's wanting you to explore it's still trying to guide you at the same exact time, which I really like. Now, they gave you just almost a glimpse of you going into this uh, town that's been invaded by mongrels. But instead, uh, they also say that off the beaten path, if you see smoke screens, if you see like animals trying to get your attention or foxes, they'll bring you into certain situations or certain little side missions that you can do as well, which is really, really cool. Again, they're trying to tell you how and where to go without beating you over the head with something which is really cool now we didn't get to see any combat and that's why i'm calling this mode the more explorer mode than anything take it like when you're playing witcher when you're talking to everybody around town that's what i'm kind of thinking explorer mode kind of is for Jin. now with that we didn't get to see many of the side missions but we did get to see some combat so let's talk about it now yeah combat and you're a samurai so what are you going to do and this is actually kind of how it was uh historically to to an extent it's all about the 1v1s so you can actually walk up to an enemy fortress see the guards and go hey let's have a standoff and you'll have that type of samurai like action movie type of set where you're setting each other up and it's all about that one hit kill and you see Jin taking on two three guys in the very beginning in front of that fortress with complete ease and you're just seeing him walk into this uh campsite and then seeing him take on ranged characters so Jin isn't just like a fast gun toting like you have the weapons on your back and then magically they're in your hands it actually takes a while for him to get a bow and arrow out and just charge one up and shoot it at someone so you have to be very methodical in the way that you're approaching combat which i really like and when we get to the sword play as well you can see Jin deflecting arrows which looked so cool, sounded so cool, and it kind of gave me a 
a, a level of kind of Assassin's Creed Odyssey mixed with uh, Neo. If you haven't played Neo, it's all about stances. So different stances are for different enemies that you encounter. So you might need a faster stance to get to, let's just say, a guy that's using a bow, but you want to use a more defensive stance if you're fighting a guy with a shield. So it's constantly switching on and off stances in the fight, which looked really awesome. And it kind of had that Jedi Fallen Order thing of parrying enemies during the fight to open up to critical blows, which looked really awesome. And the samurai look is for more of an honor and integrity in your fighting. So you see after every fight, he's wiping off the blood. He's doing a little bow to his enemies. He is still honoring them while, while killing them. So let's talk about the more badass one, the character that I know I'm going to be, which is Jin. The ghost of Tsushima. So yeah, they cut to uh, you invading a camp at night dressed as the ghost. So the ghost and the samurai Jin have different type of play styles. Again, same character, but it's really taking the good path versus the renegade path really seriously here into the way you play, which I really dug. So Jin the ghost is all about deceiving. He's all about uh, tricks bombs sneaking up stealth he reminded me way more of old school assassin's creed where it's all about the assassinations it's all about getting the surprise on your enemies and it yeah it took it took me back to like assassin's creed two times it was good times back there and simpler times and what can i say it's way more brutal it's way more grotesque it's a lot more blood if you're playing as the ghost rather than as samurai Jin. So again, he's all about stealth. He's all about uh, tricks. He's all about bombs. He's all about putting the fear of God into the mongrels, which is dope as hell to see all of them kind of panic and scurry around and you actually using the mongrels and anxiety against them. Next, then you see him get onto this boat, um, this mongrel boat, light it on fire, blow it up, and then just completely just to flame the entire camp. Um, and that's pretty much all the combat that you get to see. I didn't get to see any, maybe it was in a flashback and I, and I blinked and I missed it. Any horse combat, which I'm totally fine with. We'll probably see it anyway, but cool, whatever. Uh, but what I saw here, I was 110% on board. Just like some small things here. Um, customizing Jen. You could customize whatever outfit you want uh, whenever you want, it seems. And so you can have a purple and gold Jin Samurai. It's whatever. He's your character. So they really want to immerse you in it to pick any color you want. Who cares? There's also charms that affect and enhance the gameplay that you like. So if you are all about the samurai and you're all about a certain stance, you can have like poison on your blade. You can make yourself a little bit more stealthy. It's whatever you want. So the customization is there. Also, Japanese voice acting. Um, Sucker Punch team really wants to make it apparent. This is not just a Western take on, on Japanese culture. You can have it set at the very beginning to localize Japanese voice actors uh, subbed. So we're going to definitely have this debate of subbed versus dubbed. The people that are going to play the game solely in English or the people that are going to play this game solely in Japanese, which is really awesome that they took the time and care to make sure that they're getting everything Right. Last but not leastly, there's a black and white mode to get super classic samurai. And it looks like the fights that are way more important, you're going to have that samurai shogun like standoff that you see in cinema. And they make it very clear that this game is a love letter to all that. So walking away from it, it seems like, you know, a lot of people were complaining, at least like old time AC fans, that Valhalla was just not for them. This kind of does seem like uh, Sony's approach to Assassin's Creed and the Assassin's Creed people always wanted, which was in feudal Japan. And it looks like we're getting that with Ghost of Tsushima. It really does scream uh, AC vibes. And if you want to play stealth, it's definitely encouraged. It's definitely encouraged to play the way you want. So I was already looking forward to this game. I was already getting the collector's edition. I'm a huge fan of The Last of Us Part II, um, either though it's all spoiled for me. I'm a huge fan of what I see from Cyberpunk 2077. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but walking out, Ghost of Tsushima wasn't just already one of my most anticipated games. It is. It is my most anticipated game, and it definitely looks like it's going to be a big contender for Game of the Year. 
it just screams it. I love what they're trying to do here. I love the minimized HUD. I love the combat that I'm seeing and how I'm able to really create this character and make it my own. So I want to know what you all think of the trailer down below. It's not really a trailer. It's more of a showcase. Again, 18 minutes long and it just flew by in my God, this is why I play PlayStation. But again, I want to know what you guys and gals thought down below. Let me know what you thought. No wrong answers here. What did you like? What did you not like? Are you a fan of it? Getting it day one? Let me know in the comment section down below. Yeah, no wrong answers. It's all about a conversation. So here at Bad Big Games, we talk about all things game news, reviews, unboxings, breakdowns like these, and the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast each and every Thursday. Uh, so if you like the sound of all that, then please hit like, share, subscribe. It helps me out. Grows this big, beautiful family that I call home. And so with all that said, with all that out of the way, what am I doing with my hands? Keep it what's about you. Have a nice one.